overheard some mothers talking the other day and they were talking about folic acid causing tongue tie. Now, I've done a fair bit of uh, research myself into tongue tie and one of the things that I just wanted to warn everybody about is this whole um, saying that it's causing things and um, stuff like that. Now, in terms of what we do know about tongue tie, we know that the incidence rate is potentially increasing. There hasn't been um, very recent data around prevalence of tongue tie, but we're noticing anecdotally that potentially that is increasing. Um, what we do know is that it does cause breastfeeding problems and we also know that it potentially can impact speech development as well. But the number one impact of, of, breastfe of um, tongue tie is actually on breastfeeding. There has been some suggestions that the MTHFR um, defect, which is a genetic um, marker um, and, and defect, that that may actually cause um, or be implicated in some way with tongue tie. But um, given that that affects about half of the population, um, it's and the research is very, very slim, it's, it's probably unlikely to actually explain fully the, um, the impacts that we're seeing on tongue tie. Now, uh, the danger in saying, you know, oh, folic acid causes tongue tie, which there is no evidence to suggest that that is in fact the case, there is um, potentially some evidence to suggest that there may be some soft correlations in that they may be related somehow, but there's no evidence to indicate that, that it's a causal relationship um, or that, uh, yeah, that that's, we, we just don't know. There's not enough evidence at this point to indicate one way or the other. Um, but what we do know is that since the introduction of um, folate, fortification and folic acid at fortification of cereals and things like that, that we've seen a steady decrease in the overall prevalence of neural tube defects. Now that's things like spina bifida um, and, and other neural tube defects. So um, I'll just bring up the data, just one sec. So it's saying in 1998, the overall prevalence of neural tube defects was 13.3 per 10,000 total births. The overall, the lowest overall prevalence um, since then was recorded in 2008 when there were 10.7 per 10,000 total births in 2008. So what we're seeing is we are seeing a steady but slight decrease in the prevalence of neural tube defects, which would indicate that that fortification is potentially having an impact and helping to prevent that. Now, um, some people are, are worried that it's actually the synthetic form of folic acid, which is what's commonly found in uh, maternal supplements, etc., that's causing this problem. In which case, if you are concerned about that, there are actually natural ways to obtain folate. But I would recommend in all of this that you actually discuss it with your doctor if you are concerned, because like I said, there really just isn't the research evidence to indicate that this is a strong connection, which is not to say that there isn't any relationship, but it certainly isn't a clear cut um, causal relationship, which is what I've heard a number of mums suggesting that it is. So in terms of natural sources of folate, there's some really great foods that um, you can eat to be able to get your folate naturally. So things like um, beans, legumes, so peanuts, a variety of different beans, lentils, uh, liver is actually one of the best sources. So in particular beef liver, but also you can, um, but also organic chicken liver, etc., is also useful as well. Cooked spinach is another good source, um, and as is corn and asparagus. So there's lots of ways to naturally get um, folate, but um, it's important to make sure that you are considering uh, what vitamins you're taking, etc., during pregnancy based on the advice of your doctor. And um, just be cautious if you're reading articles that are saying that this is what's caused tongue tie, etc. Be asking for references. And if you come across any really good references of good scientific studies that have found a relationship, I would love it if you could send me the reference because I'd be really keen to actually read it. So um, in all of this stuff, I think it's really important to just be cautious and um, be a little bit skeptical in that um, the, the 
I guess the danger of an internet based information society is that we can get caught up in somebody has an idea and then it gets um, it it just continues to get perpetuated by other people jumping on board and and saying that so and so said it therefore it must be um, it must be true and it develops almost this like social proof weight to it in that because people are talking about it therefore it must be true but it's it kind of reminds me of the whole um, that old story of the children sitting around fighting and arguing over whether the kitten is a boy or a girl and so they decide to hold a vote and then that will determine the sex of the kitten the fact is um, the facts are the same so whether the the children decide that the um, whether the cat is female or male the fact is the cat will still be the gender that it is regardless of what the the majority decide and so that's where I always say um, it's it's far more important to actually look at the research evidence rather than just what people are saying about it so uh, we definitely need more research into this um, into tongue tie in general we need more research but particularly into whether there is any connection um, but discuss it with your doctor if you are concerned but my word of advice would just be to tread with caution and um, don't believe everything you read or hear on the internet all right thanks everybody hopefully that's been useful for you to be able to get a better idea of um, the connections or lack thereof between folic acid and tongue tie but um, yeah I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on it and if you do know of any research articles please post them in the comments below because I'd be super keen to read them talk eat play and learn everybody